everyone, what's up? And welcome to the Evolve with Emily show. I'm your host, Emily Hayden. And today we have guest Sean Sharoff. He is a U.S. Marine, an MMA fighter, 2-0, what's up? <laughs> Palestinian. He is the creator of the Stay Ready Protocol. He's a YouTuber. He's on Instagram. He's incredible inspiration, motivation. One of the like most badass people that I follow on Instagram and a complete savage. So I'm beyond excited to interview him today and to bring him to you guys because I know after you listen to him talk, you're going to follow him on all of his platforms. You're going to be totally involved. He's one of those people that like if you need that source of motivation, that kick in the ass, that dose of reality you're gonna get it so sean welcome to the show let's go cool. wow that was quite the intro <laughs> <laughs> i feel like i'm supposed to do something now no, too. <laughs> no, no, no. you get to just thank be like you. hey thanks no, it's a pleasure being here thank you so much first podcast so i'm excited I'm so excited. i'm excited too i uh i have to tell you this is a special one for me because as of right now i don't interview people that i'm not already in person friends with mm -hmm. and this is actually the first time that we're meeting in person but little do they know, we've actually been friends online for a little while now, just always talking back and forth. We've tried to connect it, tried to connect a few times. So I'm glad. Thank you so much for taking time on a Saturday to come spend time with me. Always, always working on the weekends. It doesn't matter. Same. But um, no, I appreciate that. That's like a lot of a lot of trust you put in the first uh, for podcast without yeah. having someone in person. So yeah. No, I won't let you down. Let's do it. Of course. Yeah. And honestly, it's just because, you know, you know, when you come across those people on social media and you like watch a video of theirs or you read a caption and you just like fully connect with it, you're like, damn, like you're my people. Mm -hmm. That's what I felt when I watched some of your videos. Like I had to go back and share. I was like, he knows I'm creeping right now because I shared <laughs> I shared an old video of yours. <laughs> I did see that. I was like, damn, she went pretty far back for this one. It wasn't that far. Uh, you yeah. don't post that often. <laughs> but man, I was like, yes, like people need to hear this people yeah. need this like slap in the face this like no bullshit mentality you know so watching the things that you post online and the fact that you can tell it comes from a genuine spot people don't have that level that level of savagery they don't have that for no reason yeah. like people who don't go through shit don't have that 100%. so I'm kind of curious like how did you develop this mindset how did you develop this strength how did you develop that no excuses like no matter what's happening like you get it done you push it you go for that extra mile where does that drive come from mm. well I think uh, uh, a lot of it it's uh I obviously wasn't born this way uh, like you said I think a lot of times when you go through certain situations I think uh they shouldn't define you, but they definitely mold you into kind of the person you become. And um, yeah, I was actually uh, really insecure uh, growing up. I got bullied as a kid. I was really overweight. And um, yeah, I, I went through a lot of different phases in my life and joining the military was one of those things that obviously like really taught me how to uh, to be a man and like a lot of those put put those uh, those characters and those morals in you at a, at a young age. I think that was really important for me. Um, but the big thing, biggest thing for me was just realizing that um, I really wanted to just be happy in, with my mm -hmm. life and uh, I made a decision that I wasn't going to do anything that no longer made me happy and I think that kind of um, that kind of confidence and that ability to just, just say no to anything that wasn't really like truly giving me happiness and like allowing myself to pursue whatever it is I wanted to do um, because originally when I first joined the military I thought I was going to do 20 years and 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 stay with that and I thought that was gonna be my life and uh, things didn't like life happens and things mm -hmm. didn't go according to plan and um, kind of got twisted with that curveball and um, it ended up leading me to MMA and and pursuing that as a passion and um, yeah, just different little things along the way, I think, were, uh, were a big part of that. But I think the most important thing was just realizing that uh, I just want to be happy. And yeah. anything that got in the way of that just was the enemy. So, Damn. Yeah. I love that. Um, so going through the military, what were some of the key things that it instilled in you that you still practice in your life today? Like, are there just some things that you still practice from that? Yeah. Um, I think uh, f for me, because... Before I joined the military, I was a little bit of a knucklehead. I was on a more of a troubled path. I was mm. doing a lot of drugs and gang banging and uh, just not doing things I was supposed to be doing. And I thought like that kind of stuff was like, oh, like you're a man and like stuff like that. But once I joined the military, um, there's just things that they teach you, <clears throat> like the integrity, um, having that 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 honor and like even when no one's looking, just making sure you're doing the right thing. And a lot of those things that um, I've 
when I got out into the c- civilian world, like even just being on time or just s- like following through with the things that you say you're going to do, mm-hmm. um, I found it was just a really rare quality amongst most people, um, which I thought it was just so common that like everyone should be on t- should like practice that and everyone right. should like carry themselves that way. Um, so there's a lot of those like li- really small details that they showed me on on how to carry myself and and mm-hmm. and, and and those kind of things that I, I definitely every single day that I just. I really use and yeah, mm-hmm. I would definitely not be the same person I was without that. What was it like coming out of the military? Because I happen to have a lot of military background friends and family and oftentimes they say that it's really hard to go from being in the military to all of a sudden being a civilian. Mm. Was that a hard transition for you? Mm, yes and no. So initially I thought I thought it was because obviously it's entirely new. You go from constantly being surrounded by like-minded people to all of a sudden being in this environment with civilians that ha- don't have the same training, they don't wow. speak the same language, um, they don't have that same camaraderie. So th- in that sense, it was definitely different. But the the part of transitioning into civilian world, like ch- pursuing my dreams and my goals, um, I think it was a lot easier for me because I had been planning on it for a while. Um, mm-hmm. I think it was in t- 2015 when I first decided that I was like, I'm going to be a professional MMA fighter. I'm going to get out and I'm going to pursue this. Yeah. So I had been like doing research for like three years prior to getting out of it. Like, okay, where am I going to train? Like, what am I going to do? Like, where are my finances going to come from? Like trying to like plan everything out. So Mm -hmm. like, it was almost like a countdown that I had. Like I could go back on my Instagram and I got like posts, like counting down the days (laughs) um, where it was just kind of like when I was finally free to like go do what I want to do and be who I wanted to be. It was just like, okay, like now it's go time. So, oh, that's awesome. Um, it was actually a, a, a lot easier for me. I mean, it was definitely difficult, but mm-hmm. it was for me the the biggest reason why I got out of the military was because I felt that it was I couldn't do both two things at once. Where if I was wanted to pursue becoming a professional MMA fighter and be becoming a world champion, I wouldn't be able to fully commit to being a United States Marine. And in order to do that that job of service, you have to fully commit and make mm-hmm. sure you're all in on that. So um, I think it would have been selfish for me to actually stay in and do that. So just being self-aware uh, that that is not what I wanted to pursue anymore. And I had other things that I knew if I didn't pursue, I might regret later on in life that I was just like, okay, I need to go all in on this. So um, definitely didn't leave with a sour taste in my mouth or anything mm-hmm. like that. I was just like, I just wanted to pursue bigger things. And yeah. I almost felt like once I got out, it was like, okay, now I could do what I want. And like, no mm-hmm. one could tell me what to do. Cause yeah. there's a lot of limitation, especially in the midst. Like people tell you when to use the bathroom and when to shave your face and wow. what to do. And like, everything is just like, you have a set place and a uh, time where you have to be at all times. So to be able to just get up and do what I want every day, it was almost like I got that freedom back that I was like, wow. I want to go all in. I think the biggest difference I notice uh, with you and other friends who I feel have struggled a lot is I think what you're saying, how you had something to look forward to. You mm. had another path that you wanted to take. And I think a lot of the times people get out of the military and they haven't even thought about that. They haven't even considered where will my money come from or am I passionate about something else? Do mm. I have a passion to pursue? So I think it's huge um, no matter where you're at in life, no matter if you're in the military or in college or, you know, there's all these different transitions that we have to make as people, right? So I think it's important to always look ahead and say like, okay, what are my next steps going to be you know and then not to be scared to pursue that like it's pretty it says a lot that you were able just to be like yeah I'm going for it I'm going all in you know um what did that look like when you got out and you first did you what, what did you do did you join like an MMA gym did you get straight to training what was what was that like so uh it was actually pretty pretty funny my uh <laughs> the way I, I got into so I train out of the Ruka training facility now in Costa Mesa and it's uh the head coach there is Jason Perillo, and he's actually, uh, it's a private gym where they only, it was only like a few MMA fighters they they have at that gym. It was like BJ Penn, Michael Bisman, and Chris Cyborg, uh, some of the biggest names in the UFC. And I sent him an email. Like, I just got on there. I was like, hey, the, um, I know you don't know me, and I know you only take on pro fighters, but I'm getting out of the military, and you're local in Orange County. I'd love to just get in there and show you what I got. And... Came in there day one and uh, he just I just hit the punching bag like he didn't tell me anything. He was just like go hit the bag and I felt like I was doing bad. I was like man like no one's like he's not saying anything you know mm-hmm. and then uh, I just kept hitting it. I was hoping he would like tell me like to stop and then like <laughs> he just kind of left and I was like damn like I blew it and then uh, 
I was like getting ready to leave, and uh, he asked me, "Do you have a mouthpiece?" So I was like, "Yeah." I was like, "I was like, I'm like okay, show up on Friday. We'll see how you take a punch." And uh, damn. So Friday <laughs> came around, and they just threw me in there with the like pro MMA fighters, the best in the world, and uh, yeah, I, I got my ass I was kicked. Say, did but they whoop on you? <laughs> yeah, no, they. I definitely didn't come in day one whooping ass. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, I, and and even some days still now, you know, you, some days you're the hammer, some days you know, and that's a big mm -hmm. part of it, but. Um, I showed up and I had heart and, and that's what they want to see is just, just what you got. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so kept showing up after that every single day. And, um, I had a wrestling background luckily, so I kind of was already exposed to that. And I'm mm -hmm. obviously a huge MMA fan and had been training prior to that. But, um, yeah, just getting out and just jumped right into that gym and, uh, uh, life actually tested me immediately at once I got out of the military by tearing my ACL no again way. for the second time. Yeah, oh, so man. I did that once prior to joining the military. I tore my ACL, and that was like one of the most difficult uh, times of my life. And then I did it again, uh, that same knee. And um, so I didn't get to fight like I had already planned, and it set me back. And then, um, but everything happens for a reason, and I trusted yeah. the process. And uh, eventually, I came around, had my first fight uh, after seven months post surgery, and yeah, knocked him out second round. Hell and, yeah, yeah, that's what's so. up. Telling your bad self. Here we are. Let's go. <laughs> how good? How good did that feel? Like coming back after surgery and you get a knockout. Yeah, it was good. Um, it was just, it was really terrifying. That whole f that first fight is just. Um, yeah, what does like, it what does it feel yeah, like when well, you're going to fight? I took it on two days' notice, so like they, I was I hadn't even been what? fully I wasn't even cleared after my surgery to fight. My surgeon was like freaking out. My therapist was freaking out. <laughs> my therapist um, was freaking out. <laughs> I got on the tickets though. <laughs> but, I got uh, on the tickets. Yeah, they called me on Thursday and they're like, "Hey, we got an opponent, and if you want to fight, you can fight uh, for King of the Cage." Um, and it's a pretty big uh, promotion. Like Ronda Rousey's fought there, TJ Dillashaw, Jeez, like awesome. some of the biggest names. And um, it was at Toyota Arena in um, Ontario, and it was five thousand people in the arena. It's like shut huge, up. Yeah, for my first fight, so it was a little nerve wracking. Uh, <laughs> I I didn't really understand the severity of the like the situation because you kind of like everything just going so fast. Yeah. Um, but I don't remember much, honestly. It was just uh, it was just I remember getting to the arena. I remember the like everything prior to it, but like the walkout and then like the fight itself like everything just felt like there was so much adrenaline mm. it's just almost like kind of instinct like i couldn't even tell you what they told me in the corner wow like, really just, yeah i was just like what did you tell me he's like oh, i was like telling you keep your <laughs> left hand and, and this this and that so that for those first fights it's like it's like a lot more adrenaline and everything and, I, and that's when the experience starts coming in where mm. you learn how to stay calm in those situations and like everything kind of slows down a little bit more yeah. than like when you first start for sure oh wow that's huge yeah. Um, so after your first fight, did you have this feeling like, yes, this is what I want to continue to pursue? Mm. Or what like? There was definitely a little more validation because mm -hmm. it was like, okay, won. I was like, oh, okay, now I'm a fighter. Like I've had my fight. Cause like before I was like, I couldn't say I was a fighter and I right. don't have a fight yet. So I definitely felt a little bit more validation, mm -hmm. but, um, the goal for me was always like I, anything I ever do. It's, it's not to half-ass anything. It's like, it's either going all in or you're not doing it at all. So mm -hmm. for me, it was like, if I'm, if I'm going to be doing MMA, if I'm going to be pursuing it, it's going to be to do it at the highest level and achieve a world championship. And um, so it was just kind of like, yeah, like the first fight, it was just like, okay, I knew this was going to happen. Like, I didn't, I, I don't like to celebrate my fight. It was actually a, a good friend of mine. I think you might know him as a Steve Gentile. Uh, he's a power lifter. I, right. I think we might be mutual friends on, Probably. on Instagram. Probably, yeah. But um, he, uh, he's like, when I was into powerlifting, he was always like, like one of the, the biggest heroes I had. And he would just like deadlift like 800 800 pounds like it was not and he would just put it down like calmly and like walk away mm -hmm. and i was always like the dude that was like oh yeah, like, yeah, all yeah. amped up like screaming and, yeah and i was just like i was kind of like like impressed by it and i asked him and he was uh, like why would i celebrate when i knew i was gonna do it already he's like i already visualized myself lifting that that's in my tough. mind and i was like fuck yeah so like that, yeah. i think that's <laughs> huge um have you ever read the book relentless by tim grover no, I haven't. Oh my gosh! Stop what you're doing. Buy it. Tim Put Grover, it on that audiobook. was uh, Kobe Bryant's yes. uh, basketball coach. Yeah, I do it's my know. favorite book. I've read mm -hmm. it probably four times. I've listened to the audiobook like multiple times. I'll listen to I think it's chapter sixteen, maybe fifteen, mm -hmm. um, backstage before I go on stage before I go because it talks about it talks about three different types of people: a cleaner, a closer, or I'm sorry, a cooler, closer, and a cleaner. Mm -hmm. And you'll have to read the book to like fully get what it means. But it shows the difference. And for example. 
example, pregame, right? The first person is super hype, like hyping everyone up, you know, um, and then when you get all the way down to like the cleaner, the cleaner is like the calm, the cool, collected because they have visualized it so many times in their head that they already knew they're going to do that, just like what you're saying. Mm-hmm. And so for me, the mindset that I have as well is um, I know where I'm going. And I'm not really going to stop until I achieve that. And so everything that I do achieve is just a check. Okay, next. Mm -hmm. Check. Okay, next. You know, so it's not that you can't be excited about it. Absolutely, like, you know, be excited for the wins that you have. But I think it's this mentality of, like, I'm doing the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. Like, if my goal is to be the best in the world at what I'm doing, I don't go to, like, cherry on top for the thing that you have to do to get there. Right, right. Yeah. And it can't be be uh, too much where, like, you're, like, not celebrating at all because right. obviously like <clears throat> i was happy and like i I, yeah. did, I was like ecstatic and once i got to the crowd like my friends I was exactly like, yeah, you know like exactly you have this, but it's it's when you get too caught up on it and you celebrate those small victories for too long that's when i feel the complacency kicks in that's when you kind of start losing that ambition and that drive exactly and i think that's the biggest point is when you celebrate too much like you're saying you get comfortable Mm -hmm. you know and then you're not fighting with that same spirit that you had to get there in the first place and also i i mean at least in in my sport um in my sport you can literally mark all the right you know t's and dot your i's and do everything right you can come in and get last of the show and Mm -hmm. then the next show you can go and get first yeah so like you literally have to like it just humbles you like no other like no other sport i don't think because i mean i'm I'm, i don't know in your sport you know you'll have to tell me but like to be able to go from that to be able to take those hits that's why it's like i never look at the highs i never try to get too high on the high Mm -hmm. because i don't want the low to feel that low like i I would rather be steady somewhere in between you know of course yeah no i understand that for sure yeah Yeah. so so okay what is your goal my goal in with MMA. This MMA? Oh, of course, UFC world champion. That's the goal. Um, the goal was to get into the UFC by 2022. Okay. Um, what do you have to do to get there? Uh, so it's usually just three fights minimum. And they w- obviously with uh, people that are of lighter weight classes, mm-hmm. they have a harder time to get in because there's so many of them versus people in the heavier weight classes like myself. It's a lot easier because there's just less of us okay uh, what weight class so, are you in uh heavyweight and okay. then uh i should be doing my next one at 205 which is light heavyweight but um with the ufc is just about having impressive wins so like having those knockouts having those submissions just finishes like mm-hmm. they just want exciting fighters like yeah. people that are going to sell tickets so um you finish your fights in impressive fashion and uh, of course it's like just with anything it's networking and like mm-hmm. obviously like your managers and promoters knowing the right people um but yeah, I, I feel like as long as I keep winning my fights and keep doing impressive fashion, the call's gonna come. It's just it's yeah. just a matter of time. Absolutely, yeah. hell yeah. What's yeah. uh what's your current goal right now? I know that's your goal, but like, what's your um, focus right now? Like, what are you working towards? Do you have a fight coming up? Yeah, so that was the uh the big thing is this this COVID pandemic just set everything back for mm. it, where the only people having fights right now are on the highest promotions, where ah. it's Bellator, or UFC. I was actually in Thailand until uh, March training. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, How was that? It was amazing. It was like I I wanted to go back once a year. So I was supposed to be back right now. Um, because I between january to march mm-hmm. january to april that's usually when they have high season and it's like the best weather and like the busiest time to uh, to go and it's, it's like a huge community out there just um not just mma fighters but they have like crossfitters and, oh, and bodybuilders wow. and it's like this mile long streets so they call it like healthy street and it's just oh, it's all on the same street yeah yeah it's like just a mile long street of like dozens of gyms and healthy restaurants okay and, like, everyone just there <laughs> just trains all day and, i'll meet like, you there <laughs> yeah it's like it's like a mecca for that's like so people cool. and uh, a lot of europeans and australians that they go on what's called like fitness holidays that's what they call them and their work like allows them to just take two months off to just Stop. go yeah they just go tra- it's like so cool and i was like really They're like yeah i'm just i'm on fitness holiday I'm on that's, fitness a, that's what they say and i was like oh cool like can like, i do that yeah like america <laughs> needs that yeah um but it was such a such a good experience and there's like everyone out there just wants to train and get better and like Mm -hmm. and it's not just like i said fighting like everyone's just training like just being healthy so it's really cool do you so do you do incorporate other style of training besides just your fighting Mm, and what if so what do you do um so 
I really like to have a balance where I originally started. I actually wanted to do bodybuilding before. Oh, really? Yeah, I was like Phil Heath and yeah, yeah, Ronnie yeah. Coleman and Jake right. Cutler. Those right. like I have pictures. Like I would go to expos and like that was like my whole thing where I originally wanted to do that. And then um, some guy outlifted me at the gym. Like he he, he was bench pressing three fifteen for reps, and yeah. I I could barely do it one. But I was like twice as big as this dude, and I was like, what's the point of me being Stop. big if I can't lift weights? <laughs> Stop. Yeah, and then so <laughs> that's what made you stop. That's when I got into powerlifting, and I just wanted oh, to be as okay. strong as possible. So I got I into that. like powerlifting, and then obviously like I couldn't just be big, and that's when I transitioned to more being a combat athlete. So I took a little bits and pieces of like every every training situation, that, and obviously like the cardio from being in the military, mm-hmm. um, and I kind of devised it into my own program where. I do uh, power like I combine powerlifting with like the bodybuilding and like with the cardio. So I'll normally do my powerlifting on like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'll do like ben- or, I'm sorry, squat, bench, deadlift, and mm-hmm. then I'll do uh, conditioning and and cardio on the other days, like just going on a run or like doing mm-hmm. just agility stuff. And then on all those days, I'm usually either doing jujitsu or boxing or on top of the yeah, training. So it's like it's like two to three sessions a day usually. Wow. You know, and then, active recovery days or like yoga or like uh, just yeah like a light jog or something like abs i don't know so is that um tell me because you have the stay ready protocol and i've mm-hmm. seen you talk about it a few times it sounds really dope can you explain a little bit more about what that program looks like and like your mentality behind the program yeah so the uh the stay ready protocol was basically like from similar situation of like trying all those different uh phases of my life with uh with what i was pursuing that in training i had to adjust the nutrition nutrition for that because as you know like bodybuilders eat a lot different than powerlifters and so true mma fighters and everyone had kinda has their own like nutrition portfolio and um with the stay ready protocol what i did was i just basically took everything that i knew worked for myself because mm-hmm. originally i just made it for something that worked for me because i had been bouncing around every single i did like keto to liquid diets to oh wow like every single vegan paleo pescatarian wow like, yeah every single thing like I, I was trying it and like i really put myself through hell um especially in the in the beginning like learning all this stuff because i think like when we first start off with nutrition it's like obviously everyone just the first thing is how do i lose weight this totally. fast like every, and then it's like you're putting yourself in like some like i was bulimic for a while i was like anorexic oh, and i was no like way. yeah i had like really bad eating disorders just because i was so obsessed with the number on the scale wow um that i would really wanted to help people like avoid that and just kind of mm-hmm. like put something out there that i knew worked and um yeah so i've just basically put together that nutrition program of like how to stay in shape year round where mm-hmm. you're not going through the leaning and the bulking and all that it's just a way to stay in optimal conditioning year round mm-hmm. and you're still able to maintain your strength you're still able to burn fat and you're doing it in a healthy way you're where mm-hmm. you're not putting your body through like a really bad like an, an, an unhealthy relationship with food mm-hmm. um and yeah so i'm really excited to share that and, yeah uh, so. yeah that's i think that's what i like the most about it is how you promote it and you're saying like i want people to be stay ready year mm-hmm. round yeah. like no more yo-yo dieting no more getting on a program and falling off but something you can actually follow as a lifestyle and it's cool because that's literally how you live like you're like one of the most savage athletes ever and like seeing you do that year round nonstop is awesome um i think in bodybuilding it can be really hard because it's such a such an extreme sport a lot of people especially when they first get into it like you know new people into the sport they struggle with that extreme extreme on and then they go extreme off Mm -hmm. and you see them gain like all this weight and sometimes like it's because of what you put your body through and your body literally like cannot adjust to normal food again or normal Mm -hmm. amounts of food um so it's not always it's not always like a self-control issue sometimes it's literally your body just went through hell and it's having to kind of go through that um so i i love to see other athletes that are promoting like a stay ready a all the time 365 something that you can do like year round Mm -hmm. um because a lot of people they i think they glorify bodybuilding they glorify the fitness industry and what they don't realize that like the you know what we do to look the way that we look on stage or on a magazine cover it's not 24 7 it's not how we look year round so i love that you're able to provide that for them yeah and that's a, a, a really important factor that you mentioned on is like the consistency of it because that was what i realized was that most of these nutrition programs work is mm-hmm. just the one you're able to stick with the longest that's yeah. the one that works the best because if you're able to like achieve these results in 30 days but then after 30 days you have to like binge eat and you're yeah. like just going crazy and you're just re- re- regaining all the weight you just put off did did it really work so yeah. it was just something that like people can consistently stay on and like 
year round, like not feel like they're suffering because I think that's that's a really important factor to have, especially with like food where you're eating multiple times a day, you're, mm-hmm. you're every single day for, for for almost every day of your life. Um, I think that's something that you should really have an, a healthy relationship with. And mm-hmm. you're like, OK, food is not the enemy. I just need to know what works for my body and how I could tailor it to meet my goals. Yeah. And one thing that really helped me because I've gone through my own, you know, journey of dieting and dieting a ton and then not dieting and viewing food as, you know, having kind of like a negative relationship of viewing food as like, oh, I can't eat this because mm-hmm. it's bad, you know, and like those labels. Mm-hmm. Um, what helped me a lot was switching my mindset from, oh, let me follow follow this diet to what foods make me feel the best what foods help me to perform the best in the gym um because like realistically if you eat crap you're gonna feel like crap you know and it's like I don't want to feel like crap I want to feel confident like I want to feel confident when I go to the gym I want to feel confident in a bikini I want to feel confident always so I think like the best form of self-love is choosing choosing the option that you know is best for you so sometimes yeah it means like not eating you know tons of peanut butter or brownies or whatever it is yeah. you know it's not that those things are bad but it's like mm, it's not best for me and like I love myself enough to not do that right now mm-hmm. you know to not overindulge on these things of course um so I know I know diet is hugely massive yeah and I think that's so important especially I feel with the female community a lot more than males because I noticed that with a lot of my clients because mm-hmm. as a personal trainer as well um a lot of females they just like feel like they have to under eat and then that's yeah. the biggest problem why they don't achieve most of the results is they're under eating more than they are overeating and i feel like um that's just a misconception sometimes that they're like oh like i can't eat this or i can't eat this mm-hmm. and it's like no like you can you can eat this and like you can like eventually like get that metabolism going where you're able to enjoy those things and even having the peanut butter and the brown yeah. like once in a while it's not yeah, gonna hurt you exactly. it's just getting on that where it's no longer a diet like you said and yeah that was what because it was originally i was actually like th- trying to do the stay ready diet because it just sounded better and i'm like okay people are knowing this but i hate that word like i don't like using the word diet oh because yeah it just it creates like i feel like it's associated with like suffering like diets yeah. like and i'm on a diet like i'm restricting myself yeah. like i'm not happy like yeah. oh i'm like suffering so it's like yeah we gotta change this name i love it protocol yeah, it that's great better. yeah I like yeah it. and and for me like it's like even if i'm not stepping on stage like people ask me when i bring my meal or something they're like oh are you stepping on stage soon i'm like no mm. i just this is my food yeah. like <laughs> you know like this is just the way that i live my life like i love feeling the way that i feel so like i do it 24 7 the only thing that changes is like when i'm competing i won't have the occasional brownie or, or you know tons of peanut butter because i can't mm. <laughs> you know when sure. i'm not competing sure like i'll have a little here and there in addition to my regular healthy meals that make me feel great of course so i always try to promote people or promote two people to try to find that lifestyle that that balance for themselves which i think looks different for everyone yeah definitely 100 yeah. percent. um okay so on one of your instagram videos um you were running with your dog and <laughs> it's the one that i shared right yeah, yeah um what happened first off what happened to your dog okay so my dog, his name is Apollo. Apollo. Yeah, he's a German Shepherd uh, mixed with an Akita. He's a badass. And yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a fighter. And so, yeah, he rides shotgun with me. This is my roll dog. So he always rides in the passenger seat. And we were on the freeway, and uh, some lady was just come flying. She was trying to make the exit, and she almost crashed into us. Uh, and we swerved out of the way. Luckily, I was in the far right lane on the emergency lane. And, it, yeah, the, just the, that sudden motion just sent him flying oh, out the car. Oh, my gosh um and yeah he was we were probably going about like 60 miles an hour yeah like and by the time like my car stopped on the free he was still like tumbling so i was just like oh my god i cannot uh, even imagine seeing that yeah so he and he just got up and like he didn't know what and he just started running on the freeway like i get all the adrenaline or i don't know what it was but i was this is like the only time i've ever called him and he doesn't come and he's just like running so i'm running down the freeway i left my car like just wide open and parked on the freeway i'm just chasing him and I couldn't catch him. He was just, he's he's just, he's so fast now. So I was just like, man, I gotta I gotta run back to my truck. And I was just literally in my mind, I was just like, I'm gonna pick him up. He's gonna be like ran over on the freeway because he was on on the freeway like running I with the cars. I believe you had to go back to your truck. Yeah. So I ran on my truck. Luckily, uh, there was some lady. She, I think she saw me running, and she was she like kind of uh, tried to follow him and uh, steer him off traffic, and then. Yeah, I pulled off the freeway, and luckily he was just over there. He was a little scared, but uh, he got in the in the truck. Thank and, God. Yeah, we took him to the emergency room, and uh, no broken bones, no internal bleeding. What just a some, badass. Yeah, just some scratches. So, 
yeah um wow I'm glad. and then yeah. so that video you yeah, saw yeah, explain that video and do you remember um, what you're yeah talking about so then? it was uh bef- before all this had happened i think it was the day before he fell out the truck uh we had just hit ran six miles he had never we'd never run six miles before uh when i first got him as a puppy i think he made it like quarter mile if Aww. that like he couldn't even run um <laughs> so i'm always proud of him you know every every small milestone he achieves and uh yeah. so he did six miles so um I, when I what I talked about in the video was how sometimes situations they define us mm-hmm. and if you allow them to like that becomes who you are or you can do something about it and um, I know people think it's like a little crazy but I talk to my dog and I tell him I that, always uh, talk yeah, to my dog and I was just telling him like hey like this happened like this sucks but like how you respond to the situation mm-hmm. is like is what really defines your character and um so he had ran six miles but um we wanted seven so we were going we were running and um yeah i get like really amped up when when i when i talk about stuff that i'm yeah, passionate about yeah. and uh yeah i was just really happy because he was able to uh he did that those seven miles and it was just like kind of like that like that that you yeah, like you, overcame like, yeah you did that you know like okay yeah. like you sure that was bad but like look you're you're stronger now for it and like you got some cool scars and yeah hell yeah, yeah so that was uh that was really dope think yeah. about like in life you know especially in like 2020 so many people went through so many things so many people have so many like bruises and scars and battle wounds from life of course you know from like losing their business losing a loved one ending friendships over stupid petty shit you know they're going through all these things and i think there's some people that it can be really easy to fall into that victim mentality mm-hmm. that mentality of and it, it's, it's a thing here's the thing they're justified in all their feelings. What happened was horrible. What happened was something that people should never have to go through. But like you're saying, it's what you do with it. Mm -hmm. So what do you have to say about like the victim mentality and people that are listening right now who have real reasons to be upset, have real reasons to have that emotion, but they're drowning that emotion right now. And they're not, they're not even aware to the fact that it's completely holding them back. Yeah. I mean, the, one of the biggest lessons I learned in life was bad shit's going to happen regardless. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it doesn't matter if it's 2020, 2030, the 1900s, like bad shit happens every single day to good people. And um, the only difference between you getting over it now and you getting over it and, and, and growing from it years from now is just the, the ability to understand that the situation happened and it is no longer in your control. So um, like you said, a lot of people lost a lot in, mm-hmm. in, in 2020 and having that victim mentality, the only thing it does, it almost, it cripples you because you suddenly become, uh, uh allowed to, to believe that this is happening because, oh, woe is me or mm-hmm. throwing yourself that pity party. Um, but there's a lo- there's other people that they see those situations and they're like, okay, this happened to me, but what am I going to do about mm-hmm, it? Mm-hmm. And especially your ability to realize that sooner, I think feel comes with same thing with experience, because obviously like everyone's different in the way they cope with, mm-hmm. with their issues and they mourn or whatever it is they may be going through. But everyone has to understand that something happened and something has to happen from it and what you do from there is all based off your decision you can allow that situation to to help you and Mm -hmm. be like hey this happened to me but i'm gonna do something about it and this is my plan to grow Mm -hmm. from it or you're just gonna sit there and be like hey this happened to me and what was me and expect people to feel sorry for you so i think it really comes down to that self-awareness and really understanding that there's just some things that happen in life that we can't control Mm -hmm. and the, the only thing we can do is just make sure we're, we're doing the right thing. We're putting the best foot forward and the good things will come. It's just ups and downs, you know? Yeah, absolutely. What do you, what do you feel about purpose and maybe like life purpose or your purpose? Like, mm. what do you, what do you feel on that? The your, purpose of life. Yeah. It's the um, question, right? The purpose of life I feel is happiness. It's just to find your happiness whatever Mm -hmm. that may be um for me it was always i love training like that was where i found the most peace with my therapy it was just i like training because when i was training nothing else mattered in life Mm so i wanted to just centralize my life around training and that i knew that would make me happy where now like all i do is live in the freaking gym like i'm either training someone or i'm training myself or um i'm just in the gym and that's that's what makes me happy so whatever that looks like for 
for you i think is is the true purpose because if if something doesn't make you happy in life then why are you doing it mm. i feel like it's such a short amount of time that we have here on this earth that it should be spent doing the things that make you happy and that's not to say like i feel like there's like this whole um kind of thing going around now is like all the positive positive vibes only and positive yeah, yeah. this and it's like life isn't always positive life mm-hmm. is it's it's ugly sometimes and, yeah. and 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 there's negatives but as long as we're pursuing what makes us happy and and, and chasing that i feel like it's it's going in the right direction and everything yeah. else will fall into place i agree and i think it's that awareness of knowing that like you said like if you know bad days are going to happen bad things are going to happen then when you're in that bad day you're in that bad moment just kind of like coming to awareness of being like it'll pass like yeah. there, there's a good day coming too like just as much as the bad days are coming good days are coming too i've done that with myself i found myself in a hard spot you know one of those days where like you know you're strong for so long and then finally like it just like it hits you, yeah. it hits you and you're just like fuck yeah. <laughs> and you're just like you know you cry or whatever i cry um <laughs> i cry too don't worry i cry too <laughs> okay, i'm human <laughs> okay, you know and it just like it really like you just you don't have any more left and like you let the emotion happen and i was in one of those hard spots and like sometimes it just feels so insurmountable and then that awareness came that was like oh wait this feeling is going to pass. Mm-hmm. All right. So let me just deal with the feeling. Let me get up. Let me put some makeup on. Let me go hit a good workout in. Let me go put some music on. Let me do these little things that I know will help me in the moment. So what are those things that you do in the moment when you're having those really difficult days? Like what is something realistically when everything goes wrong, when you're having a horrible day, what do you turn to? Training. It's always, it's, that's always been the ground zero to found. I know that if I'm like, whether I'm mad, sad, or, or whatever it is that I'm going through, I know if I go and I train, it doesn't have to be like lifting or, or, or I could go on a run. Mm-hmm. I could just, uh, that's like, I know one of the go-tos where I get done with that and I'm just like, okay. Like, yeah. I can think a little clearer. Like, I feel like I got like whatever it was out of me. Um, that's one of my one of my go tos for sure. Going to the to the beach as mm-hmm. well. Going mm-hmm. to the ocean. Mm-hmm. I really just like to to go and and just sit and just listen to the waves and just mm-hmm. do a lot of uh, do a lot of reflection. And I think that's one of the uh, the key elements that lacks in a lot of people is really sitting down and listening to ourselves. I feel like so many of us, especially in this generation, we know about more we know more about other people than we do our own selves. Wow. And really just getting down to sit and like. Why do I feel this way? Like, why are you? Why are you feeling these emotions? And it's just like really, almost like reverse psychology. Like mm-hmm. trying to analyze a situation from a different perspective. I feel that helps so much because sometimes we're we're just so caught up in like every time we're by ourselves, we just put music on, or every time yeah. we're by ourselves, we put something to just keep ourselves out of our own thoughts. And that's why I feel a lot of people they struggle when to fall asleep. They say like a lot of people. Uh, I, I forgot the exact the words of the quote but it was talking about people they, when they go to sleep their bodies are tired but their minds are restless because they've done too little of what like sparks their true passion wow and i think it uh it just really comes down to to just uh, knowing like why why are you feeling these emotions mm-hmm. just really understanding that and like going through it and not not finding like the alcohol or like something mm-hmm. to like drown it out you know it's just mm-hmm. really understanding those feelings and once you look you you figure that out you start learning a little bit more about yourself i think uh a lot of a lot of the other stuff become a lot easier that's huge and i think a lot of people don't know to ask themselves questions yeah yeah. you know like i know when i started doing that like i i definitely have been the go 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 24 7 always doing things you know schedules insane and so i started practicing like in in the middle of a crazy day i would just like kind of like put my hand on my heart and i'd be like hey how are you (laughs) you know and i literally just because like you ask everyone else like hey how are you doing Uh like you do care but then, like, how often do you ask yourself, like, how are you doing really? Like, how are you really doing? Yeah. You know, and I would ask myself that and I'm like, uh, oh, wow, I'm not OK. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, right. and you kind of realize, like, wow, like, I, I need to, like, I need to stop all the outside things that I'm doing. And I need to take even 10 minutes just to, like, focus on me and get myself, like, in the best position, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so morning routine is really huge for me. Uh, I know there's certain things that I do every single morning that really help me. <laughs> um, do you have a, do you have a morning routine? Do you have yeah. things that you turn to? Yeah. Uh, so morning routine all starts. I wake up. Um, Apollo usually comes in and, and make sure I, I get up properly. <laughs> and then uh, I go, I just brush my teeth, and uh, it's always the foam roll. Uh, I oh, foam really? roll every morning. Every morning. That's my go-to. I if, need I, to do that. if I don't foam roll in the morning, it just 
Yeah. I, I know some people are like, oh, do the stretching, but I don't know. Foam rolling for me is just always uh, it's my go-to. Um, it depends on my workout. In the, there's always a training session in the morning. So okay. based off the training session, will dictate which caffeine I intake. So I was going to ask if you do caffeine. A, it's either uh, if I'm doing like cardio, I'll have like a coffee, like I just okay. black coffee. Um, and then sometimes I'll have like a, like a pre-workout or something like that. But usually I have one training session in the morning, fasted. And then... Uh, I take I get done with that I take my dog out and then um, yeah I go start working um, I like to do uh, stocks as well so I'm always oh, like okay. in the, in the, the morning stocks. yeah I do a lot of the, the investing in the morning so um, yeah but it's usually uh, relatively the same just wake up foam roll get mm -hmm. some caffeine get the workout in take the dog out and then what about the started. what about nighttime do you have things that you do every night to like wind down or like how do you get yourself to wind down or are you just so tired from your training. Mm, <laughs> no, uh, I definitely I do meditation. Oh, you uh, do before I go to sleep. Yes, I do uh, breathing techniques. Uh, okay. To really like try to shut everything off. Is um, it guided or self guided? I try the guided, but sometimes it gets weird. Like when when they start like you're on an ocean. Oh right. And, like, <laughs> you're like the I'm chains not. are falling off. I, was, I can't. I can't do all that. <laughs> So uh, I, I definitely uh, just try to try to focus on just nothing. Just I think that's what was best explained that's to so me. Was the, the focus of nothingness um, is definitely difficult. I'm not the best at it, but okay. I feel like when I'm just focusing on on black and just like try really shut everything out like <laughs> as i'm like just think it's like really hard <laughs> sorry for a second yeah. i'm like it sounds a little dark yeah. like just focusing on black yeah. <laughs> just like really nothing. trying to think of nothing, nothing. just try to shut it down like that helps a little bit but uh for the most part i, I fall asleep r relatively easy i think because i mean if, if you're training that hard i can only imagine how tired you are yeah but i, I got used to it i feel like um mm. to, to some people it sounds like a lot like sometimes like two three times a day but uh it's really not that much uh because it's always something different it's not like That's i'm cool. just like going to like lift it so it's like if i'm in the, if i'm lifting in the morning mm -hmm. then afternoon i'll be like hitting the bag or gotcha. in the evening i'm swimming so it's like it's oh, always oh, something you swim too yeah, yeah where at not the ocean uh, no i have a, a, a <laughs> in my complex the pool's still open in my complex oh, dope. so that's convenient but okay. open water swims are nice yeah oh yeah. you do you do swim in the ocean yeah i don't go that far oh, but okay. I'll, sw I'll go out there and swim a little bit <laughs> okay I, i've always wanted to do the pier and back but uh yeah, not not down it's, yet. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty far. Yeah, Bring a friend. Yeah, just, uh, exactly. Buddy. No one's down to do it. I'm scared of sharks. I don't. I don't want to go. Out there. I'm, I, can't, <laughs> I can't say that I'm down, but I'll refer you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm um, yeah, so this year, um, I actually leave on Tuesday for Texas. Uh, by the time everyone's watching this, I'll already be there. Um, but what I want to do with my bodybuilding training for, you know, my goal this year is to be an Olympian athlete. Right. My goal eventually is the best in the world, obviously. Let's but that's go. Yeah, that's that first step, though. You know, I got to get there. And to get there, it takes a lot. It's going to be a lot of steps in between. But I really want to mix up my training and be more dynamic with it. One thing I've always wanted to learn was, like, more boxing and, like, MMA. And I've done a few lessons here and there. I know we're going to box or do some, you know, hitting yeah, after this, which I'm stoked it. for. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited. Like, I there's also a gym that has um, jiu-jitsu. So I'm excited to kind of incorporate that and make that part of my part of my pr preparation for the show. I'm sure when I get really close, I might not be able to continue it, of like, course. you know, two, four weeks out. But I'm excited to develop that. So you'll see where I'm at today, and then you'll come to Texas, visit, and see where I'm at then, hopefully. Yeah, it's definitely going to be some progress, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, because, I mean, you were saying you've been fighting for two years now? Yeah. That's insane. Like, yeah. the skill that you have, I think, like, I think the skill of fighting and MMA and boxing, all that, it's so beautiful. Like, it's so beautiful. And then I get in there, and I'm like this stone rock that's like, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I like the, I don't know, I think there's like this, like, finesse to it. It definitely, it's, it's, especially with boxing, the sweet science, and it's like, a lot of these guys are like, really, they have a great flow. And like, yeah. I, I, everyone's the same way, uh, unless you're like a natural with your with the, uh, your movement, but everyone starts off so stiff, stiff. and robotic. Because you think you have to like, like everything is hard. So tense yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, it's just really loose loosening up a lot. And um, yeah, because I started boxing when I was out in in Africa uh, when I was stationed there, and I have like videos of me when I first started. It's just like oh, it's so terrible. Yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> so slow and like you could yeah. just tell like I'm just really trying to just put everything to every shot and like right. you said it's a it's a it's a finesse where like you just want to be light on your feet you want to mm -hmm. be able to move your head and be as quick as possible and just 
uh, really, uh, really smooth. And, and it's, like a lot of, it's like, if you're good at dancing, you're usually good at boxing, oh, okay. but I'm a terrible dancer. So I don't <laughs> see where the logic is. So I'm like, I feel, some, I feel like I'm not a good boxer, but, um, two years later, yeah. you're like, I'm winning fights and I still can't dance. <laughs> yeah. But no, I'm, I'm sure you do. You take some you salsa lessons or something. You know, my sisters do that. Yeah. Really, yeah. They've done salsa and like, so and you're from here. Dancing. Yeah. Okay. How many sisters do you have? I have two older sisters and one younger brother. Yeah. Okay. And they all live here. Um. Yes, kind of. One, one was in the Peace Corps, and then okay. when COVID happened, she had came back, come back, and the other one was she was studying abroad in in London, and yeah, they, everyone's just all over the place. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. What about friendships in LA? How how have you built those friendships, especially going into the military and then coming back, and you know, being gone for so long on like deployments? How was it coming back, and how like where have you met friends? How have you made friends? That's everyone always asks that question. Like, how do I build good friendships? Wow, Especially as a guy, like how how have you built friendships? I really, uh, I really have it, honestly. Oh, really? Just, yeah, no, I'm I'm very, uh, I, I don't know, I like I'm just really focused and like mm-hmm. I like to keep my I rub rub elbows obviously with people and I meet people naturally through training, but um, I haven't really uh, made that many new friends and like mm-hmm. really gone out gone on about in that um because i just really don't go out really honestly i just mm-hmm. i have my few friends that i've known for years and and people that i stay close to and um it's not to say like i don't like meeting people and like i'm a- introverted yeah yeah but, no new friends uh, yeah no i just really <laughs> like to uh i really like to focus and, and and just focus on my training and like this is the same reason why i, I i've I've been single and the same mm-hmm. reason why a lot of the a lot of stuff in my life i just i'm so goal orientated mm-hmm. where it's like i feel like sometimes i almost get it's almost too much where yeah. like, I'm like oh no i don't want to go out i don't want to do it because it it, and it affects your training but i feel like sometimes you have to be selfish in that way to achieve 100%. some goals especially when i know like what from what i when i learned in, like bodybuilding and like i would only imagine at the highest level it's like you you would you lose some friendships and you, you go through like some of those things that's going to cause you to be a little selfish but yeah. um i think it's important to achieve those those goals especially yeah. at the highest level yeah because here's the thing like with elite level athletes when you're going after something like being the best in the world of what you do you're not just doing this for fun and then you're having friends mm-hmm. you know like this is everything so i think the right people will push you more into that push you more towards that and i think the people that aren't meant for that season of your life they're going to draw you away from it so i think it's smart that you've created this bubble for yourself um and i always say like you don't need a lot of good friends mm-hmm. one yeah if you have one if you yeah. have one really good friend you know one of my best friends is my trainer you know you go, like Marvelous love i love him like he's one of my best friends and we kind of only see each other when we train we sometimes not really actually (laughs) we keep saying we need to hang out (laughs) we keep saying we need to hang out outside i think we've done it with him and his girlfriend like once or twice but like our you know that that's everything to me and like it's my passion it's my love it's what i do every single day so being Mm -hmm. able to share that with somebody that has the same mentality i think is huge so i think sometimes for people like us our our friendships our circle can be like our trainers our training partners you know, um, I'm thankful that when I go back to Texas, I'll have my family around me for the first time ever mm-hmm. with uh, prep, pre- prepping for a show. Wow. You know, I've done 20 shows now. I'll be doing my 21st show Let's go. when I go back. Yeah. And I'm I'm beyond stoked, you know, because having having that support, you know, especially on the really hard training days, the times when it's like, you know, two or three weeks out and everything's just so difficult having that little extra help or that little extra emotional support or like being able to drive to my dad's and like get a hug yeah you know what i mean like literally sometimes that's all i need i'm like i just need a hug like a 10 second hug and then i'm good yeah (laughs) you know um so i know for me that's really important um but i i agree with what you're saying i think think it's important to keep your circle like small and a circle that pushes you towards your goal yeah that's not to say like don't go out there be friends with people you know exactly but i feel like sometimes it's uh you the people you rub elbows with when you're like doing in your work or like in your training environment like especially if like that's your life then like those become your friends like those become like the people and it's just sometimes it's people that you're just with on a regular basis like your trainer like for me like my coach is like obviously Mm -hmm. like that's who someone i would consider a friend Mm -hmm. um but it doesn't feel that way because it's just like you see each other on a daily basis Mm -hmm. and you're just you're always working and um yeah, but I definitely have some friends. I I like to think, you know, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that big of a loner. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, no, I definitely agree, and I think the that's like the best way to do it, and and especially nowadays where it's just there's so many so many different like platforms and social media. Yeah, and it's yeah. Like you have all these people on 
that's like uh yeah I just I feel um pretty lucky that I get to do this podcast or my YouTube channel you know because a lot of the time I'll do something like this you know which is obviously like work related but mm -hmm. then I get to like connect with and build friendships relationships with people who I can do work with or business or whatever um and it's cool because I I, I just feel like in this day and age like you said there's so many ways to connect with people you just have to put yourself out there you know if you really want to go down that path um but for me I'm like I kind of use it to my advantage i'm like i get to meet all these people and, yeah. you know like i feel really blessed and lucky to be able to do that yeah no this is really dope i would imagine like it's, and it, you learn so much like i i used to be um on my embassy duty in the marines and i would listen to joe the joe rogan podcast mm -hmm. like religiously like, yeah. i wouldn't miss a single one and i learned so much like just yeah. from like random like guests that would come on there and like different backgrounds and like I feel like everyone has so much that they can offer. It's just they like do. having the platform to get on there and like just yes. share it with someone, you know? It's like yeah. It's really dope. Yeah. And my goal with my podcast is, you know, I want it to be, you know, I don't care if it's not the biggest show, mm -hmm. um, but I, I want it to be one of my main things. It's something that I love. Like, I'm so passionate about this. Yeah, There's so <laughs> many people that have said that it's like changed your lives in so many ways. And I know for a fact that, you know, it was a solo show and I just recently moved to doing all interviews with some solo in between um, but here's the thing like I'm not special I just happen to start documenting my life online and I happen to share the mindset tips that I learned um, I quite literally matured and grew up online um, which is cool but also a little like <laughs> <laughs> you definitely I've definitely grown since then you know you can look back and see you're like yeah. oh man <laughs> but um, my point for saying that is that like what you just said every single person has something to offer like you the person in line at starbucks like we all have different life experiences for a reason um so my goal with this show is to be able to grow it expand it and be able to get people like yourself on the show to you know you have experience and background and things that come out of your mouth today that i would have never thought to speak on or i could have never said like i think every single person has such an important role to play and i think i've always known that i've always been like the connector of people so i feel like by getting people like you on the show i'm able to now connect you with let's say that there's like two people that connect like mad connect with you through this you mm -hmm. know and they reach out to you and whatever like that's my job like I'm here to connect you I'm yeah. here to provide all the value that you have to everyone that's listening um, so my goal with my podcast is just to do that like just and if it becomes big awesome and if it stays like a really close knit tight show then that's awesome too um, we have people all over the world that listen which I think is just really dope yeah. no I see I, I I definitely keep up with the, the podcast a couple times and, and and watch some of the episodes and you have like a really loyal fan base too like your audience like this yeah. you can tell they're like super engaged and they're yeah. like actually coming on here and like listening to what you have yeah. to say so that's really it's really cool that you kind of have that community thanks yeah. yeah it's dope like people you know they'll take notes and they'll you know write their takeaways from it and and I've always said that like my goal here is not to be like cool you know mm. look at me I've never been that way. Like, yeah. I'm not the coolest person. I don't, you know, I don't know. I just don't, I don't do that. Like, for me, I want to provide you even just one thing that will get you to take action in your life. Because similar to you, like, I want people to be happy. And I want people to be free. And I want them to experience, like, love and happiness and freedom in their heart, like, in their life. And I know what things did that for me. And so I want to pass that along and share that with them. Because maybe they're miserable in their lives right now. They're unhappy. They're not confident. They're insecure. They're fearful of, you know, going after what's really inside of their heart. And maybe something that I say inspires them to take action to do that. So, like, all day, I'd rather share the hard shit. I'd rather have the hard conversations if it inspires people to actually create change in their life. And so I want to thank you so much for being on today's show because truthfully you, like you are a fighter and I don't just mean like physically and like in the real world you are but like your spirit you have a fighter spirit like you feel like you've probably always been this way but it's inspiring like people need that people don't have the fight that you have and so by watching you and just watching you live your regular life and watching you train the way that you train and watching you become a world champion people are going to have a fight in them that they didn't have before. People are going to choose not to give up. So don't ever stop sharing your, your fighting, your spirit, your, your fighting as well. It's dope, yeah, but like, don't I ever stop sharing that. that spirit. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. That's yeah. More videos. Yeah, no, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> the world needs it. The world needs it right yeah. now, especially more than ever. Yeah. And I feel like that's one of the, the, the things that I try, like, just to push on like the people the most is just to be raw and just like authentic especially in today's society where everything has to be politically correct and filtered and, and fact checked it's just uh i feel like people kind of lost that that courage to just 
be say what they want to say and uh, like i have this thing where i don't i don't apologize for things i'm not so like i used to say sorry all the time like and now and like it came like like every time i say sorry now like i'm like are you really sorry like oh why? because like some like you say sorry like you know like if you bump into someone or like they bump into you you know, i'm so sorry, sorry. But, like it wasn't even your fault like what do you apologize like he right. bumped in or vi vice versa like uh like s something happens where like you just say it out of habit and it was just kind of one of those things that i was just like oh like i need i need to not be saying i'm yeah. so sorry so much and especially with just right now where we are in with everything i feel it's really important for people just to be be who they want to be and just do what they want to do because it's like i said it's just such a short amount of time that we have here on this world so if you're just kind of going through the motions and living your life and and, and and you're not happy about who you are and and what you're currently doing then just go out there and just be raw be authentic mm -hmm. be yourself yeah why and, not yeah someone's gonna love you that's true uh, yeah. <laughs> um okay so we're about to wrap up but you recently got some new ink and it's pretty sick so yeah. can we see it and can you tell us like why yeah. you got it like what it means your your oh. camera's right here you can kind of yeah. like you want me to yeah all right let's check this out how long did this take uh so 24 hours a eight, three eight hour sessions um and this is a, a piece, it's based off of, uh, have you ever heard of Memento Mori? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's basically the concept of uh, uh, back in the day, they used to worship on death uh, in, in order to remind themselves to live. Wow. And it was like, no matter how high you get or how low you get, you always know that like this is temporary and eventually time will run out. Mm -hmm. So we had the gr got the Grim Reaper on the horse here and going into the hourglass and the time running out. Oh um, wow! Oh my yeah. gosh, that's and so sick. Yeah, so it's just uh, just one of those reminders that um that I like to I like to carry and uh, mm -hmm. just every day kind of live my life along those lines of tomorrow's not guaranteed, so do something about it. Hundred yeah. percent. That's how I that's how I live my life too. I always say I've been blessed with the opportunity to experience death so many times because that's my biggest driving force to live mm -hmm. you know and to really live my life because i got the opportunity of today a lot of people didn't yeah so that's so dope that's why i ask yeah. i love asking like what they mean and stuff because it's yeah. like wow now i love that so much more <laughs> yeah no and I, <laughs> it was already dope but like that's cool yeah and I, I think like especially with with death i think it's one of those things that like it affects everyone in life mm -hmm. and um, it's one of those things that I feel has that stigmatism, like like being a bad thing. But um, sometimes you learn a lot from that. Like there's a lot of the situations that I've been in my life that I know I would have probably been in had that situation not happened prior wow. to that. You know, so yeah, um, it's it's definitely not something that we should fear. It's something that we should embrace. And I think uh, I think everything's gonna be all right. For sure. Well, hey, thank you so much for spending your time on a Saturday. This has been amazing. Yeah, thank you. This is my first podcast. So Hell yeah, I'm done. Back on this. Do it, after, do it. After a couple hundred, hopefully. And then, <laughs> like, hey, Emily was the first one to have me on. So thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Of yeah. course. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for joining for another episode. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to follow us both on Instagram. Uh, tag us both in your stories. Let us know what your biggest takeaway was. Uh, share it with a friend. That would really help the podcast out. It's pretty much the only way that the podcast grows is if you share it you text it you you know put it on your story whatever you want to do i'd really appreciate that so thank you guys so much don't forget to give the youtube video a thumbs up and leave a comment and i will see you guys in the next show